Hello everyone, my name is Catherine Scott Moncrief from the Purdue University College of Veterinary Medicine. Today we are going to demonstrate how to use the Freestyle Libre technology to monitor glycemic control in your diabetic dogs and cats. The Freestyle Glucose Monitoring System made by Abbott Laboratories measures interstitial glucose every minute for up to 14 days. It is an invaluable tool for monitoring glycemic control in dogs and cats. The first step is to obtain the Freestyle Libre sensor and reader for your patient. Purchase of the sensor and reader requires a prescription. The sensor is a one-time use disposable device, while the reader is a one-time purchase and can be used multiple times with different sensors. The reader allows wireless monitoring of the interstitial glucose. Alternatively, you can download the Freestyle Libre app for Android or iPhone to monitor glucose and download the data to your phone. There are several advantages of using the dedicated reader rather than a personal phone, so that is what we recommend. Two different devices are available, the Libre 14-day device and the Freestyle Libre 2 device. The Freestyle Libre 14-day device is the one most frequently used in dogs and cats, and this is what we will demonstrate today in this video. To place the Freestyle Libre 14-day sensor, you will need the following supplies. A reader, a new sensor, a set of clippers, alcohol swabs, a pair of small hemostats, and a tube of tissue glue, such as Vet Bond or Glucha. The next step is to choose and prepare the placement site. Ideally, the sensor should be placed in a location that the pet cannot access to remove or disrupt the sensor. The best site is usually on the dorsal or ventral neck or thorax. The skin needs to be healthy and free of any dermatologic lesions. We recommend clipping a region that is approximately a four to five centimeter square, which is slightly larger than the sensor that measures 3.5 centimeters in diameter. After clipping, the skin should be cleaned with alcohol and allowed to dry. An alternative is to use a bandaging product such as vet wrap to remove the hair, oil and dander from the skin. Once you have prepared the skin, you are ready to prepare the sensor for placement. The sensor comes in two parts, the sensor applicator and the sensor pack. First check that the product codes of the sensor and applicator are identical. Then peel the lid completely off the sensor pack and unscrew the cap from the sensor applicator. Place the sensor applicator into the open sensor pack and line up the dark mark on the applicator with the mark on the sensor, as shown in the video. Place on a hard surface and push down firmly on the applicator until it comes to a complete stop. You will have to push quite firmly. Remove the loaded applicator from the sensor pack and turn it over. The needle and underside of the sensor disc are visible in the applicator. The needle contains a five millimeter filament. Once the applicator is deployed, the needle inserts this filament under the skin and then retracts back into the applicator. The needle does not remain in the patient. Before placing the sensor, it is recommended to place a few drops of tissue glue around the underside of the disc to ensure that it stays adhered to the skin. The applicator is now ready to use. Be sure to apply the sensor immediately after applying the tissue glue to prevent the sensor from sticking to the applicator. We will first demonstrate placement in a diabetic dog. Place the loaded applicator on the prepared skin, taking care to place it at 90 degrees to the skin. Push down firmly on the applicator and hold for approximately 30 seconds. Then gently remove the applicator from the sensor disc taking care that the sensor disc remains on the skin and does not pull away with the applicator. Sometimes it is necessary to use a pair of hemostats to assist in retracting the applicator. 
Once the applicator has been removed, push down firmly on the edges of the sensor to make sure it is completely adhered to the skin. Sometimes it may be necessary to add additional tissue glue. Depending upon the patient, the sensor can be left uncovered or covered by an adhered dressing, a pet sweater or a thunder shirt. A covering is recommended in active patients or patients with housemates that might attempt to remove the sensor. The reader is able to read the sensor through a jacket or a bandage. Although the sensor is waterproof, we do not recommend bathing the pet or allowing the pet to swim while the sensor is in place. Once the sensor has been placed, switch on the reader and pass the reader over the sensor. When the reader scans the new sensor, it will detect the sensor and a Start New Sensor box will appear on the reader. After clicking on the Start New Sensor box, scan the sensor again and the reader will indicate that the sensor can be used in 60 minutes. 60 minutes later, scan the sensor again and the first glucose reading will be displayed on the screen. Once the sensor and reader are paired together, you cannot use another reader. So make sure you have a dedicated reader prior to starting the device. If the prior sensor had not expired prior to removal, you may need to use the check glucose setting first in order for the reader to detect that a new sensor has been applied. Now we will demonstrate placement of the sensor in a feline patient.
The sensor measures the interstitial glucose every minute and stores this data every 15 minutes on the disk. The disk on the patient can store up to eight hours of data. Every time the sensor is scanned, the data is downloaded onto the reader. The sensor can be scanned at any time, but it needs to be scanned at least once every eight hours in order to capture all the data. Data from the reader can be uploaded to a computer for viewing as a PDF file any time during the life of the sensor. Complications with both the device and the patient do sometimes occur. The most common problem is that the needle bends during the placement, which can lead to placement failure or difficulty separating the sensor disk from the applicator. Occasionally, the sensor fails to initialize and does not start recording after 60 minutes. I therefore recommend that the patient is not sent home until the first glucose reading has been completed. Complications during the life of the sensor include development of erythema at the placement site and rarely abscess formation at the insertion site. Additionally, the device can sometimes fail or fall off early. Indications of sensor failure or impending failure include an error message, gaps in data collection, and low or high readings that do not fit with the clinical picture. Of course, in some cases, the patient removes the device prematurely. Once the sensor has recorded data for 14 days, the reader indicates that the sensor is expired and it should be removed. Some sensors are easily removed by gently peeling from the skin, but sometimes an adhesive remover solution is required to remove the disc if it is closely adhered to the skin. The daily glucose curves that are generated by the Freestyle Libre sensor should be interpreted similarly to traditional blood glucose curves. The duration of insulin action and maximum blood glucose lowering effect, or the NADA, should be assessed. The LibreView software also provides a summary with daily average glucose concentrations, insights into the glucose pattern over time, which can be used to assess the average insulin response, and information about how much time the glucose concentration is very high, high, in target range, low, or very low. In the future, we will discuss interpretation of interstitial glucose readings in your patient and how to troubleshoot problems if they occur.